Hello, and welcome to this PV Tech Tech Talk Series webinar with JA Solar. My name is Mark Osborne, Senior News Editor at PV Tech, and I'll be your moderator today. The title of this webinar is Understanding and Benefiting from the Rapid Shift to Larger PV Panel Sizes for Utility Scale Projects. Today we have two speakers uh, from JA Solar. Uh, we have Michele Citro, Senior Product Manager. He will be explaining uh, the major range of panel types available in the coming 12 months and be focusing on the key characteristics of the larger format utility scale panels from the viewpoint of their production and best use in projects. This also includes an analysis of the pros and cons from the supply and demand side of each panel type. Uh, and he will also be introducing for the first time JA's latest Deep Blue 3.0 panel series. Our second speaker will be Ignacio Espinoza, JA Solar Senior Technical Manager for Europe. He will expand on the key considerations of utilizing large panel sizes using LCOE analysis and in-depth technical case studies. Attention will also be given to key considerations such as wind load, tracker design uh, for large area panels. Now, the shift to larger monocrystalline wafer and module sizes is clearly uh, one of the hottest topics we have in the PV industry today. And uh, as JA Solar is one of the leading solar module Super League members, as well as being one of only a handful uh, of companies with major in-house wafer production capacity, I think this is, uh, we're perfectly placed here uh, to guide, uh, to, for them to guide us through these topics. Uh, but before we start, uh, just a small reminder from me uh, that we do have time for a Q&A session at the end and people can post questions throughout the webinar and we'll try and get through as many as possible at the end. Uh, we will also have people from JA Solar to respond to general questions using the webinar platform, but also be aware that uh, really in-depth questions that we actually typically get in these Tech Talk webinars can be better answered offline in emails should you wish uh, the follow-ups, uh, but that, that's available to everybody. Right, uh, I think we're ready to begin uh, with our first presenter. Uh, this will be uh, Michele Citro, JA Solar's Senior Product Manager for Europe. Michele, over to you. Thanks, Mark, for this full introduction. It is my pleasure to give these details about JA Solar product. And this presentation will consist of two parts. So as you mentioned, our target is really to guide customers through the changes that are currently ongoing in the PV industry. And as we can already see in this slide, there are a number of products on the market for utility scale projects. Then we want to let people understand the reason. So the development rationale of this uh, change, and then we will answer the question, how will be implemented this product offer? And the last and most important part is about the comparison of module choices in terms of benefits of the different modules. And then, as you said, in the second part will be a practical point of view. So we really focus on dem from demand perspective, checking the impact of this module on LCOE. But now let's go step by step. And before to go to dive into the technical details, let's just have a quick overview about JA Solar. Here you can see some figures. Let's say that the success of JA Solar is based on the leading technology. So we are fully integrated manufacturers. So we produce in-house wafer, cells, and module. Currently, we have more than 15 gigawatt of manufacturing capacity. And by the end of the year, we will top the 20 gigawatt mark for the uh, modules lines. We are a global leader in the PV industry. You can see this also in terms of a diversified customer base. We have uh, around 10% market share. And we are we were for the last three years in a row the second largest global module supplier in the PV industry. But now let's focus, as I said, in these changings that are currently ongoing. So the best way to start is to show the modules power trend for utility scale projects over the last years. So I will use also the laser pointer to see how we can see two different regions over, two, over this graph. Let's say light blue part 
with the module power was increasing basically because of an increase of efficiency of the solar cells. So 10 years ago, we were around 300 watt peak. It means 15% efficiency at module level. And now we are at more than 400 with the same size. So this means around 21% efficiency of module level. And this means around 23% at cell level. So let's just say that this increase will be not sustainable for the next 10 years because we are close to the limit of the silicon uh, solar cell efficiency. But what the market is asking is for sure to decrease the LCOE and then what we can do and then we will move to the, this deep blue area is to provide model with the higher power and this will have also larger size. So to, be the, to, to do this, we have different options. But what I want to stress, to clarify, is that all the options we have in this deep blue area, they share the same technology platform in terms of, te of cell and module technology. So we can see here on the right, the first two, let's say, key technology that are used in our deep blue series. We start with the half cut technology. And then we see the current flow. So the main advantage, as all of you know, that with the uh, half cut technology, we have that the upper part of the module is basically independent from the bottom part of the module. Uh, another key characteristic is the multibus bar processing at cell level. So you can see here how this will increase the capability to collect the current. And then this will also lead to lower operating condition, to less losses. So let's say to lower hotspot temperature. And that's not all, because also we have some advantage from uh, optical perspective. So the use of a multi -bus, uh, bus bar that actually they should be called round ribbon because they have a wire structure. They will increase the, the surface, let's say the active part of the cell. So let's say part of the light that is incident on the wire will be not reflected out of the module, but will stay and will be captured by the solar cell and generating more current. Now we can move to the next slide where we see the third and most important advantage of the deep blue series. And this is the gallium doping. So let's say that JS Solar is the first module supplier to apply gallium doping on wafer to get highest, high efficiency cells. So JS Solar already patented this process, granted IP rights last year. And let's just give some more technicalities about this. So let's highlight that it's still P-type. So we are using P-type manufacturing uh wafers but instead of boron we use gallium so the advantage of gallium is that uh, they will not lead the creation of the so-called uh, boron oxygen complex that are, they act as recombination centers so with gallium we can have advantage in terms of uh, of our warranty so as you can see now on the bottom right we will give uh, as warranty two percent degradation over the first year and then, according if the modules are double glass or single glass, we will have 0.55% for single glass over 25 years and 0.45% over third year, so ending at 85%. This is for sure a key benefit, and let me highlight again that this is not due to commercial reason, let's say, that we give this new warranty condition. This is really because of technology, uh, improvement of our product. Said this at uh, wafer la level, we are now ready to switch on the key topic of this presentation. Let's see, let's uh, say in detail the change in wafer size. So first of all, we say here the naming, you have heard about G1, M6, M9 and M12, but let's see first of all, what does mean in terms of size. On the left, we can see a full square wafer with size 158.75 millimeter. This can be seen as an upgrade of what was per, for years a standard in the PV industry, 156 millimeter. So this full square 158.75 millimeters is the series 10 in JS Solar product that is now called also D-Blue 1.0. 
When we move to the next one, it's 166 millimeters. This is now in JSOLAR offer code series 20 or DBLUE 2.0. Let's move now to what is the most important part of this presentation. So we see here 180 millimeters. So let's say, first of all, that this is just for sake of making a clear wafer name for the industry. As we talk in the past for years about 156 millimeter, when actually was 156.75 millimeter. In this case, we talk about 180 millimeter plus, because this means that the size can be a few millimeter larger than 180 millimeters. When we jump now to the next one on the right, this is 210 millimeters, and this is the biggest size that can be used because this is used also in the microelectronic industry. But this does not mean that should be used also in the PV industry. So let's see now what does it mean in terms of electrical performance, this change in wafer size. The idea is that the voltage will be the same. So when we have different wafer sites, the voltage is not impacted. What is changing is the current. So when we have 166 millimeter wafer, the current is around 10% higher and then the power is 10% higher. With 180 millimeter plus wafer, we have a current that is around 30% higher compared to the baseline. When we now switch, to the 210 millimeter wafers, the current will be definitely much higher, circa 75%. So this will lead to a new challenge in terms of module layout. So the wafers, as we will see better in the next slide, should be cut in three parts and not anymore in two parts. But another challenge I would highlight now about this big size 210 millimeters is that the cell process, as you know, is done on the entire wafer. So this represents a challenge in terms of process homogeneity. So in the cell manufacturing using 210 millimeters, the process must be homogeneous for a site that is almost 80% larger than the baseline. But another point now to highlight is that in the future we will have these different products on the market. So let's say there is no a one size fit all solution. So all the players in the downstream, they have to get used to this. They have really to optimize their project according to the best module that uh, JA can offer. So we see here, this is for sure forecast based over the, let's say, what is expecting to happen over the last, the next two, three years. And then you can see that there will be a switch among the different technologies. One of the target of JSOLA is for sure to give standardization. And then we make very clear which are our product and which are the main features of our product. So let's see in this slide what corresponds in terms of product to the different wafer sizing. So we will go through our product offer starting from the 158 millimeter wafer. Then we will go to the next step, 160 millimeter. And then we will focus in, let's say, 500 watt plus era. And before to start this, I want just to highlight that all these modules that we will uh, see now are available both in monofacial and bifacial double glass version. I will show the details in terms of dimension for the monofacial version but then for sure you can get all the further specification for the bifacial modules so let's consider this as baseline so 158 millimeter wafer half cut the wafer are cut in two parts so let's say the main advantage of this technology is for sure that this is a fully bankable technology in terms of uh, availability, so we have an established product, so there is no question about compatibility. And then also in terms of, let's say, economy of scale, we have a wide choice in the market for this product. Going more to technical details, we can see here the parameters, the electrical parameters. We see that this module has VOC around 50 volts, and then the current is the standard one. So let's say we are at operating current less or around 10 amps. 
this is an advantage because as you know lower operating temperature will mean lower uh, thermal losses so we can say in general this technology will perform particularly better in environment with very hot areas also the weight of the module is here below 25 kilogram this can also be an advantage in uh, building the plants so this module could also be used in a rooftop and commercial and industrial application the next step would be to use 78 cells so we can increase the power increasing here the number of the cells and not the dimension of the wafer so this module is also in the je solar offer we are currently at 445 watt peak and if we see the electrical characteristic we can just highlight the idea the voltage is increasing almost around 10 percent this is because of the additional cells that you have in the module layout when we move now to the next module that uh, we have in our offers that is the 166 millimeter wafer we can see first of all that there will be not any more that drawback let's say so here the layout is exactly the same the standard 72 cells and then we can see that the voltage is around 50 volts or even less for sure the weight of this module is a bit higher and then the dimension are also show clearly on the slide so this module is larger compared to 158 millimeters and is longer so here we are around two meter to half centimeter so the main feature let's say this is an innovation of GI solar now in the offer but this module is also important to highlight is already in the market since more than one year so we should say that this technology has been already proven the advantage of this technology are also clear to the downstream players and then here we do not have these compromises to on the string length and for sure we will have using this module the BOS saving I was mentioning before now let's go to the next step now to so really to this new era with the module with the power higher than 500 watt so here we can see how there are two options on the market so in an objective way let's say we want to show both characteristics of the model so we start from modules on the market that use 210 millimeter wafers so the first characteristic of this is that the wafer are not cut in two but are cut in three this is because of the current that is particularly high and this will lead also a layout that is let's say not standard one so as you can see also here from this picture you have one of the three substring that has a less cells on it so you can see this ribbon connector that this is needed to make let's say the series of this so in total then there are 50 cells and uh, in terms of electrical parameters we can see that uh, the VOC is also slightly higher compared to a standard 72 cells module so we are with the voltage above 50 volts in terms of current here being the cell cut in three parts the operating current is around 12 amps when we move now to the technology that JSOLA is implementing in the Series 30, so the so-called Deep Blue 3.0, we have here that the voltage is lower because of the standard layout with 72 cells. And then we have the current is slightly higher. So we are operating current around 12.7 amps. This is, by the way, not a problem because this is fully compatible with the current a string inverter on the market and then for sure in terms of a central inverter this will not be a problem another point we want to highlight here is that uh, the decision to go with the, these uh, sides of wafers has been taken not only by JS Solar but also from other major players let's say three out of the top five global manufacturing have decided to go for these wafer sides and this is for sure also from let's say from demand sides an important parameter to take in account but what we want to show now is some further details to explain why we have chosen 180 millimeters so here we have some consideration at let's say production cost so these are first of all projection on the long term you can imagine that to make possible this product there have been large investment in the in the manufacturing lines but if we compare 
again, on the longer run, we can see that the model with the 180 millimeter that is shown here in blue will, will have lower cost in terms of wafer. When we compare to the other two options, that here we have the 500 module, so it means the in gray, the 210 millimeters, and then we have the baseline, the standard the G1, so let's say the 158 millimeter wafers. When we move now to cell cost, because of the bigger size of the wafers, we could save cost in cell manufacturing using the 210 millimeter wafers. But this advantage will be completely lost when we go to module level because of the, let's say, the production losses that you will have because you need to cut the, the cells in three parts. And then let's say also because of the utilization of the, the wafers in the module. As I said, we use only 50 cells if, uh, with the 210 millimeter technology. Using 72 cells with 180 millimeter technology will lead to lower cost on the longer run with this technology. And then let's say, and the last but not let's say less important perspective is to evaluate the logistic cost. As you know, the impact of logistics is getting, let's say, more and more important together with the trend of the module prices. So we can see that using 180 millimeters wafers, we can pack in one container around 286 kilowatt. The standard with the 410 watt peak is 244. So let's say this is a difference around 15%. But also, if we compare with the 500 watt peak, we can pack around seven, eight percent more in one container using this uh, 180 millimeter technology. So let me just remark one point here that when we're talking about 210 millimeter, these are all data that are taken by JS Solar because we also, let's say, developed, analyzed this technology. So these are not data from competitors, are data that they have used by us according to our uh let's say development plan so we went through all this product but as we mentioned in the title that's not all because uh, you are already hearing about product approaching the 600 watt peak threshold let's say so how this can be possible and then we will clarify also this topic so as you can see here here we have considered one module that have 78 cells with the 180 millimeters uh, wafer. So using this model, we could approach, let's say 570 or even more. But the main issue, if we use exactly the same layout, so let's say leaving the spacing between the cells, is that this model will be too big. So adding another line on top, we will have uh, uh, the height that will be more than two meter 40. And then let's say this can be a problem. So this technology will be compatible with the tiling technology. Tiling means that the cells are somehow overlapping and then you have a higher packing density. This is a technology that have some advantage in terms of module efficiency that will increase around 0.4%. But on the other side, we should also highlight that this will lead to higher cell to module losses in terms of bifacial performance, if you have no spacing between the cells, let's say the bifacial gain is somehow reduced. And then another point important to highlight that the tiling process have, let's say, in uh, itself some uh, higher process risk. You can see from the picture here that you need this overlapping. So this means that the, rib the ribbon must be, let's say, somehow flattened in that overlapping area. You have a lower contact area. So let's say there are some challenges that have to be fixed in the manufacturing. JSOLA is working on this and we launch this product when it's fully reliable. Okay, so this is just a recap about my part. So here we highlight the main features of the the blue 3.0 module so we will have in our let's say plans in 2021 
to have 14 gigawatt of capacity. This product, by the way, will start in production already in Q3, so this year. And then here we can see again the, the most interesting uh, highlights. So in terms of temperature coefficient, that will be very low. The, the low irradiance response is also great. So let's say it's 98.5% compared to the uh, standard STC. I have again reported here the the size of the module. So this module with 72 cells layout is 2.26 meter high and 1.25 centimeter large. The weight is 28.5 kilogram. That will be fully compatible with all the current trackers. But this will be explained in the second part of the presentation by Ignacio. So I leave the floor to Ignacio and thanks from my side. Well, thank you, Michele, uh, for this presentation on large area wafer and module trends. Really very interesting, Michaela. Thanks again. Right, uh, our second speaker uh, will be Ignacio Espinosa. He's the Senior Technical Manager for Europe at JA Solar. Ignacio, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Michele, for those interesting information about GA Solar product in this new era. From my side, I would like to focus on a practical point of view, how to choose the best option for our PV plants in this new era. Well, we have left behind those times where the different manufacturers' models were basically the same in terms of dimensions and technology. We used to make a, des a design for our plant considering, for example, a standard 72 cells model. And in case you would need to change it it was easy to implement the need chosen model in your plant. However, this is not happening anymore. Currently, we are finding different products in the market in different terms, not only about efficiency, also about dimensions and weight. So the next question which comes to our minds is how to make the right choice for, to our, pro our projects. Well, the main advantage of these higher power models is that we are improving the density of power. It means that we are concentrating the same power that we have with previous powers using less space and more interesting using less equipment. This is directly traduced to a decrease on BOS cost because we are using this uh, less equipment and less labor and time to build the plant. After all, this is a reduction on the capex which became into a better LC LCOE. Referring to these uh, 400 uh, BATS modules, which we are naming uh, conventional modules, with this new higher power era, above 500 BATS modules, we are reaching uh, the LCOE, we are reducing the LCOE by seven or 9%. Well, as you know, this LCOE shall not be understanding as a fixed value because it is affected by several parameters. So it's better to understand this is a guidance, but not a reality for all cases. The other point that I would like to highlight in this slide is our gallium doping technology. Uh, Michele has explained it in, in, in the first part of the presentation, but I would like to remark because it is causing also an improvement for LCOE as it is decreasing our module degradation. Our gallium technology is also helping to reduce the LCOE as the degradation numbers are improving by this technology, reducing the degradation for single glass modules up to 0.55% per year. And with the, using uh, bifacial modules, double glass modules, uh, we are reducing to 0.45%. Well, now we, we would need to ensure that these new modules with its new uh, dimensions and electrical characteristics and compatible with the rest of the equipment that we are using in the plant. We need to understand how these larger models impact into the whole system. In this slide, you can check here, we are defining which elements are affected and we will analyze how each element is affected. This bigger side of the models will affect mainly to the trackers or mounting system. For the inverters, we would need to check whether the electrical features and are matching with these mainstream inverters in the market. But due to the density of the power, new modules will impact in the installation cost as well in the point only in a positive way. 
reducing the BOS and then the installation cost. It's also important to check what is happening to the logistic. In this point, the aim is to ensure that we are not changing this budget. Finally, but not less important, the usage of space for our plants. It's also important because it's impacting also uh, using this higher power. There are several elements to ensure that our models are suitable uh, for our plants, which is the first step. After all, we would need to make that decision and probably the best, to the best tool to make this decision is LCOE analysis. Well, as I mentioned before, it is important to understand that this LCOE will be different for each case. However, making some cases, we can make a general idea about the trend that we will find with each type of models. That is what we will do in the last part of this presentation. But first, let's check the suitability of the models on the main equipment of the plant. The first one, the trackers. This is probably the most challenging equipment to fit with bigger models. How is it impacting on them? Well, the reason are basically the, the bigger dimensions that the, these higher power models have. The first one that we can see in the slide is the wide limit. During the tracker design stage for the plants, we have designing a, a designing limit, which is based on the width of the trackers. Our mates from the trackers company, they call it a cord. Basically, this is a dimension that we are we cannot exceed. This is corresponding to this B uh, letter in the in the figure that you can find uh, at the right of the text of the trackers. Using two big trackers and the biggest modules, it would be challenging to be below this limit. Even more using bifacial technology, as we may need to separate the modules from the torque tube in order to avoid the shadow that is produced by this torque tube over the modules. During this last month, we have been working with mainstream trackers manufacturers in order to ensure the suitability of our models with 2P trackers. And at the moment, we can say that we are suitable with them. In any case, all these tracker manufacturers are upgrading the products to be compatible with these new models I mentioned. So this point is something to take into account and analyze it carefully, but it's at this moment not a critical issue. For sure, using a one p tracker, the limit of the width is higher, so this is no problem. And also it's happening the same for a mounting system where you are designing uh, the mounting system uh, case by case for your project. The next point to check is the different wind loads that we will find because of the final dimension that our 2P trackers will have with these new modules. Depending on the local wind conditions of the site and the local regulation that, you, that we would need to fulfill on the design stage, we may find different trackers for the edge of the plant and the inner part of the plant. For sure, this is something that was happening also in the past with conventional models. However, in this case, we might be making this issue most frequent with these bigger sizes of the models. This is another point to take into account. Increasing the size of the modules, we would need also to increase the size of the fasteners. This is the next topic. Or fixation for the modules. This is in order to maintain the same mechanical load conditions that we need to fulfill according to the tracker designs. For sure, this might be a disadvantage for these modules because it might increment the cost of the trackers. But the point here is that we would like to, to understand how these new models are compatible with the trackers. And yes, the idea is that you, we need to analyze it carefully because the challenges uh, could offset the savings cost by the BOS reduction that we are finding using these higher power models. <clears throat> Regarding the inverters, they are less impact than the trackers, <clears throat> but we will need to check some point as well. One of the main points in our design of higher power models was to keep the open circuit voltage similar to the previous models in order to maintain the same strain length. Michele mentioned in the first part of the presentation, uh, well, we, we all know that we could be losing advantages of, on this BOS cost reduces, reducing the strain length. This is the, the main point. 
But our models are keeping a similar value regarding the open circuit voltage. This is below this 50 volts, which is the limit, ensuring the same string length than the previous technologies. Other point to be checked is the short circuit current. Well, in this point, using a string inverters uh, might be uh, more challenging than for central inverters. In this case, for string inverters, the maximum input current are lower than central inverters, but they are also suitable uh, because they used to have a maximum input current for each input of uh, 30 amperes. And we are below this value using two strings. So there's no problem on this regard as well. For sure, using central inverters, it's it's easier, as I mentioned, because they can you can make the string boxes configuration in your plan adapted for the plan, so you can uh, change this value. The rest of the parts of the plant which is impacted, the last check-ins are related to the installation cost, the logistics that we have mentioned before, and also the usage of the space. Well, uh, as we are using less equipment in the plant, thanks to this density of power, we will save costs related to the number of string boxes, uh, less cables in the plant, and mainly less labor to install of all of it and time for the mechanical and electrical installation. So sure, this is a big advantage to mitigate the risk during the construction, during the construction stage. About the logistic, it was other important point during the design uh, of the modules because it was important to optimize the usage of the containers in order to keep this important cost for the for the project. This, this is a, a, a big uh, part of the budget of, of a whole plant, so we need to keep it in the same in the same range than previous technology. And the last point, uh, but not less important, is the usage of a space. Well, uh, thanks to, again, the density of power, we are reaching the same power using less space. And therefore, we are mitigating some, some risk that we may find in the ground, in the soil. For example, maybe we are avoiding some part of our site, which would need a predilling to install the trackers. And thanks to the density of power, we will not install in this part of the, of the park. It's just an example. So those were the, con the concepts that we need to consider for this uh, larger model era, these checkings that we would need to understand the compatibility of our models. And well, uh, now, mm, well, we, we check that those concepts may affect to the capex of the plant. Basically, is uh, increasing the cost uh, uh, of the trackers, but also we will find some savings on BOS. So we are proposing here to use LCOE to understand which is the best choice, looking at different uh, kinds of products for our project. So we will do it analyzing uh, six different scenarios using three different types of models in two different cases. Okay, the, the models will be um, the conventional one uh, using 158 millimeter cell, the S10, uh, 410 watts. The second kind of models will be S20 using 166 millimeter cells, reaching 450 watts. And the last one is S30, uh, which is a 180 millimeter cell and 530 watts. All of them will be used in two different cases, two different plants, uh, which will be the same in terms of uh, their characteristic. It is uh, around 100 megawatts nominal power uh, with heavy wind loads conditions. And the other case is the same plant, but with normal width conditions. In this case, we are analyzing uh, different speeds. The place is not important because the, the wind speed is, the, is the, the number that we will use to the design, uh, but we can find this, these numbers in other places. So forget the place, it's just the, the wind conditions. So as we are trying to understand which is the best module for each case, we will fix all the parameters that are not, that are not changing. The plants are equal in terms of power, as I mentioned, technology. Both are using 2P trackers and the same string inverters. So 
for sure they will have the same shape and the soil situation is considered good. The main differences uh, will be at the tracker cost and sure we will have some BOS savings that we will uh, reduce the as we will reduce the, the equipment due to the density of power and also we will reduce the usage of uh, space uh, starting the same power. So as we can see something to highlight in these tables uh, just uh, using this this uh, medium column this uh, 166 millimeter cell 450 watts we are reducing the amount of modules and trackers in the plant but 8.8 percent it's a significant reduction but using the biggest one this uh, with uh, 530 watts we are reducing the amount of modules uh, by 22%. And we are also reducing the area that we are using by, by 9%. So this is uh, really significant. Uh, just to remark that we are using as well 7,000 less modules for, for the same plant using the, the biggest one module. However, as I mentioned, the difference uh, is not only a tracker cost uh, because this uh, increase may offset the density of power benefit. So we need to, to check not only the capex, but considering the LCOE. Here we have the results for each case. Uh, well, as a consequence of having these uh, less modules, less trackers, less equipment, we will have savings uh, also in electrical equipment, mainly with cables and combiner boxes. We are also saving this mechanical installation, as I mentioned, and also uh, less civil works as we will need to prepare less area for the trackers. But these savings may be balanced with this tracker cost. Here we can see in the first line for each case, the difference with the tracker cost in, in these two scenarios, in heavy wind load conditions, uh, in this in this case one, we are finding that the best one in terms of the tracker cost is uh, the 450 watts, because uh, well, uh, we are finding in this case uh, the edge trackers are sorters. Uh, this is a tracker design request, as we cannot set the same axis length mainly because they are withstanding bigger wind loads. And we are also using larger fasteners, uh, the fixations for the modules, and it is uh, supposing an extra an extra cost uh, for the for the trackers. So the most balanced situation in terms only about the cost uh, for this first case is the one of uh, 450 watts. In the other case. As uh, all the all the trackers are in the same shape and the same length, uh, the inner and external trackers, the best case uh, absolutely in terms of tracker uh, cost is uh, the 530 watts module, as we are saving uh, equipment, saving number of trackers. This is the the main reason. Looking at the LCOE, <clears throat> well, in both cases. Um, we are finding a better results with the biggest power module because considering the savings of the BOS, uh, despite of these uh, tracker cost differences, uh, after all the analysis of LCOE, considering all the all the lifetime of the project, uh, we are finding a better a better value for LCOE. For sure, in the second case. Uh, where, where we were finding also better uh, capex condition as the tracker is uh, decreasing the cost, the LCOE is is much better than the than the first case. It's interesting also to mention, as we are talking about the LCOE, that opex cost opex cost, cost sorry, reducing the plant equipment could be lower as well. At, uh, at least the cleanance task will have an important impact in this OPEX budget. So, summing up, we can establish uh, some conclusions. Uh, for the 410 watts product that we are using, this uh, 158 millimeter cells, 
Sure, we will have a competitive price as the production lines are still working. This is a very reliable product, as uh, Michele mentioned in, in, in his part. For this uh, 450 watt product using 166 millimeter cells, this is the best balanced product for 2 bit trackers, as we have checked, because it's, 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 uh, its behavior in different wind conditions is probably the best one. And it's fitting in certain conditions, mainly with these uh, heavy windows, let's say. But in the meantime, it's maintaining uh, this power density benefits that we that help us to reach uh, a good LCOE. And the, the 530 watts uh, product using 180 millimeter cell, uh, well, sure, it has the best LCOE and the best return of investment. And all the benefits that we mentioned in previous slides, this less mounting uh, system, less labors, etc. This is the, the market trend. Uh, for sure, the future will be these uh, larger power uh, models. But in any case, uh, from GA, you, you will find the best solution for, for your product. So that's all from my side. I hope uh, this webinar helped the audience to make the right choice for their projects and mainly help the audience to understand a little more uh, this, this higher power model era. So thank you. Thank you, Ignacio, uh, for this uh, LCO analysis. And thanks again, Michele, uh, for yours. Well, uh, that's the presentations concluded with, uh, and we're now ready for the Q&A session. OK. Well, I have a first question here. Um, this would be for uh, Michele, uh, we just uh, him, uh, refresh his page. Well, there's been lots of uh, lots of really good questions here <laughs> during this uh, webinar. Uh, we definitely can't get through all of them, but I know uh, the JA team, uh, looking at the questions, uh, are really try have tried. They've worked very hard to uh, try and uh, answer as many as they can. But uh, I think a really good one uh, to start with, and it's something I'm really interested to know, uh, Michele. Um, Obviously, you highlighted uh, the different large area wafers that are being adopted by PV manufacturers at the moment. But can you actually uh, explain uh, a little bit more about actually the, the wafer, the larger wafer size that JA is going to be using specifically for the Deep Blue 3.0 module? Yeah, very good question, Mark. Can you please go to slide number six so we will see? better yeah here i mentioned actually m9 180 millimeter plus so honestly i just got some fresh update from headquarters so this 180 millimeter plus is going to be 182 millimeter so our target is to foster standardization so instead of m10 we will also promote a new name saying m10 for this 182 millimeter so these sites we are going to use in our module. So as I explained, S30, we talk now about the blue 3.0. And this is what is used in JA solar modules. Then for sure, I mentioned M12, 210 millimeter, because it's on the market. So now I switch quickly to the next slide. As you see here on the right, there are different wafer sizes, but they are on the marketplace. They are not all for JA solar. So this is again something important because maybe it was not so clear in that part again this is a forecast by infolink tv infolink this was done at the beginning of the years let's see what is going to happen by the way the approach of JS solar now is pretty clear and we have sh we are sharing it and in terms of product so we started with 158 millimeter wafer i saw some question this is for sure used will be used in the future we have this 410 72 cell 78 cells is also a product we have in production 445 166 we have in production i said and let's go to the last one 530 so this is the s30 and this is the product that we have now in our ja solar offer okay uh thank you for that uh, understanding and so the the M9 becomes M10 wafer, just to be uh, to be 100% sure. So, uh, as a standard, because you're going to go with the 182. Uh, I have a question here for Ignacio. Uh, in fact, there's two related uh, in some respects. 
uh, when when you're looking at projects with uh, uh, larger bifacial modules, um, being asked here, you know, what are the what are the drawbacks of going to larger area modules that are bifacial? And obviously, I'm assuming uh, we could relate that to say trackers. What what's what's going on there? Uh, well, it's a good question. Uh, using those bifacial models, yes, uh, we are reaching uh, a better deal uh, at the end of the day. So this will uh, have a result as a resultant in 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 the yield of our product, uh, our projects, and therefore the incomes uh, they will be better. The LCOE will be better. But in terms of the of the area, when you are when we are using bifacial models with the uh, trackers, we need to to avoid in two P trackers. We need to avoid the torch tube uh, shadows that that is projected. Uh, so the the width of uh, this dimension that I mentioned in previous slides, um, we need to separate the models with ten centimeters. So um, for sure, we will need to use more area because the pitch between the trackers will be higher, and therefore uh, we will we will need to use more area definitely. But I think uh, the model uh, will be better using bifacial in in the whole uh, analysis, looking again to this LCOE, because uh, well, it will compensate uh, this increase of the area with the increase of the yield. Okay, thank you, Ignacio, for that. Uh, I have another one here, and again, it's we're talking about uh, larger modules. Uh, the different uh, we've got the picture still up there, so you can you can see the differences uh, in the sizes. But I guess um, people are wanting to understand uh, with the heavy load, uh, heavy heavy wind loads. It doesn't look like there's you know, where the differences are for the LCOE. What can you just give us a bit more understanding of that? Yes, the message here is that we we, will, we need to analyze uh, all the projects case by case on this regard, because uh, we have used here two cases with different uh, wind loads uh, here to explain that uh, it it happens more frequency with heavy with heavy wind loads that you can find different trackers in the inner part of the of the plant uh, in the in the edge of the plant, no, the external trackers. Which are receiving uh, more wind loads, no? Because they they are protecting the the inner trackers in the in the plant, no? So um, doing all the all the design, all the engineering numbers, uh, you can find uh, some differences, uh, or you can find uh, more interesting to use uh, less uh, large or less longer models, no? Let's say. So this is the the. The slide number 22, if you can go through there, we can check there uh, that with the with the most balanced choice for the for the models is the S20, which have uh, this 450, because uh, in this in this uh, situation, uh, the cost of the tracker is is less expensive. Let's say so you can find. The, the point here is that you will need to analyze case by case your project uh, to choose the right uh, the right model uh, for each case. And, and understood. And I think whether you want to answer this question because it's related as well. Um, questions about who your tracker partners are, uh, and, and specifically for the uh, for the large area uh, Deep Blue three point hmm. Yes. <clears throat> well, uh, here uh, the only, the limit, as there are a limit for the for this uh, within in the tracker, uh, we have checked with the mainstream uh, tracker uh, manufacturers. Uh, we are inside the limits. We are below the limits for this uh, with. Uh, the problem is two P trackers. Okay, when one with one P tracker and a fixed multi system, there's no problem on on this regard. But looking at these two P trackers um, with the larger models, we are very close to the limit. Uh, these trackers uh, were designed to other dimensions of the model. So the, the trackers manufacturers are moving on this uh, direction. They are upgrading the design of the trackers to 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 reach uh, the better the, the better compatibility with these uh, new uh, models uh, or larger models era. No? So uh, for now, uh, there is not a huge, there is not a 
this is not a problem, uh, but what, uh, as we are increasing the size of the models, this is something that you we will need to keep an eye on it and analyze it uh, carefully. Okay, no, that's good. Uh, and understood. Um, not sure which one of you, uh, or you may both want to actually add uh, to this one, but I've uh, accumulated various questions about, obviously, the initial use of gallium. Uh, and specifically, really maybe understand what are the key benefits uh, of the gallium doping on, on the bare wafer and how that may uh, translate uh, more clearly to your to the warranties that you're uh, adopting for, uh, I'm assuming this is the first one will be with the, the Deep Blue 3.0, uh, but you may have other modules as well that uh, will, will be using that uh, doping technology. Yeah, I can answer. Can you okay. hear me first of all? <laughs> so this is I want to double check. Cause yes. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So let's go back to slide six where I was presenting this gallium doping. So let's say for sure we have internal data, but in this case now was not possible to show too many technical details. So, but what is important to highlight is that we have through gallium, first of all, advantage in, in place, I mean, for the first year. So we go to slide six where I also showed the, I mean, the warranty condition. So the advantage is, as I said, uh, we reduce a lot LID. And this is for sure a key benefit. If we go technical details, so what does it mean that? So when I talk about recombination center, it means that the uh, carrier lifetime is longer. So we have internal study made, making this kind of uh, analysis. But what we have also seen, because we already have some plant with gallium doping that is now in operation since some years, let's say, we also saw advantage for the, let's say, operation. So this is the reason why we improved the warranty, not only in the first year, but as you can see, we go to yearly attenuation. Let's talk about attenuation, about 0.55% for single glass, 0.45%. So again, this is something proven from our side. We have internal studies, and this is something we want to promote from JA Solar. I think this was the question. I also mentioned that we, we got license for this IP right. This is also something important. So we invested on this. So we bought this license from a Japanese chemical microelectronic manufacturer. But I do not think the question was about that detail. It was more about, you know, the advantage. Got it. Yeah. No, understood. Um, uh, I think the other side here, um, uh, Ignacio, just a, a quick one. Uh, obviously, uh, the Deep Blue 3.0 uh, is yet to get out in the field for for real world testing, as well as for um, you know as a reference projects. But uh, is there anything you you'd like to update people on as to uh, as to that to that side of it? Because obviously, it's a, a, a it's a bankability issue really uh, when uh, you get new new modules, larger area, new you know, uh, using different things. Just wanted to get, get an update there. Yes, uh, well, it's a good point. <clears throat> well, we have lived in the past uh, new technologies in, in the market, no? in the PV market. And we always, in, in the first step of these new products, we always uh, have some, some doubts no? on, on them. This technology is the same that the previous one. We are using the same uh, half cut technology, uh, per technology. So for me, they are totally reliable. We are increasing the size of the cell because this is the, the trend uh, of, all, of all of us. Uh, but this is a step that is uh, not uh, new for us. So um, we will need to, for sure, to, to reach some uh, references to, to get real values. but. For me, this is not a big issue. I think the, all the technical advisors will feel confident with this uh, project, with this product. Uh, all the technical advisors, all the also the promoters, and all the figures, all the players in the in the market. So uh, I think it's they will be reliable for sure. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, just a very very quick uh, quick one here. Uh, it's basically in response to uh, your response about the wind load, high wind load factors. Um, obviously, you can. I'm assuming you've you've done this kind of analysis for say snow load, um, and obviously, bifacial has a has a, a peculiar benefit 
uh, it, from a snow load perspective, but maybe just give us uh, something there. Regarding the snow loads, it's also related to the wind loads. Uh, at the end of the day, this is we are translating these uh, kind of loads to pascals in our surface. Uh, we have the same limits for bifacial and for single uh, glass limits, but yes, we can reach uh, some benefits using bifacial, uh, more related to the fasteners or the fixation that we will use, the position that we will use to fix the modules uh, over the, the trackers or the, or the mounting system. But we can consider both uh, single glass and bifacial as the same in terms of warranties uh, related to the loads that can withstand. I don't know this. This, this is uh, if I'm answering the question or not. But well, that's what what is what it is. Now it's the same the same uh, loads. Okay, thank you. Uh, one final question. Um, uh, this for um, Michaela. Uh, People have asked some various different things here, but uh, the 530 watt uh, new modules focus on the, the utility, utility scale project side. But what's uh, what's your recommendation basically for distributed generation projects? Okay, it's also a pretty, let's say, question. So in general, I would say that we set up a email address, dblue at jsora.com, where we can address really this kind of question. So in general, so the 530 watt is a solution that we see for a huge utility scale project. So we really have to talk about, uh, let's say, big investment. We talk about dozens of uh, megawatt plants. So, and it is important, which was our target here, again, is to say there is not a one size fits all solution. So it's important to see also, let's say, case by case, considering some constraint of the installation, but at the moment, S20 is in production for distributed generated process. I see this as a top solution and also the 78 cells module. So when I was talking about 444, 445 watt peak with 78 cells, this is also something that could be used on that kind of project together with, let's say, also the 72. So if there are some more details, really, I suggest to contact us directly at that special, let's say, new email, dblue at jsora.com and we can give really case by case suggestion on which is the best solution for that particular project. Thank you for that, Michele. Looking at the time, we've ran over a little bit, but I think that's due to really uh, some excellent questions. And I want to thank the uh, webinar attendees uh, for all your input and uh, working with us uh, for the last hour. Um, Michele, thank you very much for your presentation and questions and the same for Ignacio, thank you very much. And uh, I want to say thanks to all of you and goodbye. Goodbye. It was a pleasure. Bye. Thank you. My pleasure, Mark.